Well, here's a hot topic for today. Who lives at the bottom of volcanoes? Hey, I don't know. But as the song says, they got a lava living to do. <laughs> I'm sorry. You know, all over the world, there are mysterious places that can take the lives of millions of people in a couple of minutes. They're extremely dangerous, sometimes unpredictable portals to the interior of Earth, hot and breathing. These forces can kill a person in 10 different ways. What is more, they exist not only on our planet, not only in our solar system, there are hundreds of them, active or dead. No, it's not the New York subway system. Perhaps you've already guessed that we're talking about volcanoes. Most people imagine gigantic mountains covered with blazing hot magma and erupting ash. But in fact, more than 80% of volcanoes on our planet are situated on the seabed. And what is even more shocking, they aren't uninhabitable. In the 1980s, scientists discovered unique bacteria that could survive and even thrive in the temperatures that significantly exceeded the point at which water started to boil. One of the reasons why this discovery shocked the world of science was the fact that at the temperature of 176 degrees Fahrenheit, a much lower temperature as you can see, DNA gets destroyed. However, the bacteria felt absolutely at home in such conditions and died when placed in cold water. But that was not the biggest discovery of life blossoming at the bottom of volcanoes. If you have a look at the underwater volcano, situated about 2 miles below the surface, the conditions there will terrify you, if not kill you. The pressure of the water is enormous. The water itself contains many heavy metals, hydrogen sulfide, poisonous, flammable, and corrosive gas, and other toxic substances. Despite these hostile surroundings, more than 400 species live around the volcanoes. And they're not only unicellular organisms, but shrimp, worms, sea snakes, crabs, and others. In 2003, a group of researchers from National Geographic used submersible cameras to see what was happening at a depth equal to the height of a 17-floor building, right in the crater of an underwater volcano. They were astounded to learn that life was blossoming there. The scientists saw huge schools of fish, jellyfish, and smaller creatures. But what puzzled the researchers to no end was the picture of sharks prowling extremely acidic and almost boiling waters of the crater. Despite all the improbability of the situation, all these sea creatures feel perfectly well in such environment and seem content with life. Most probably, they don't suspect that even a tiny eruption of their home volcano will wipe them out from the surface, or is it better to say the bottom of the planet? Anyway, even if you can somehow come to terms with sharks living in tough conditions in the craters of volcanoes, how about this news? Not all the volcanoes are red-hot monsters belching out lava. In the Arctic Ocean, far away from any traces of civilization, in ice-cold dark waters, there are five active volcanoes. But unlike typical volcanoes, these formations spew out methane gas and warm mud. They are mud volcanoes. And although they seem absolutely inhospitable to a human being, billions of tiny worms live there. Let's go there on vacation, shall we? Huh? It started in 2009, when Arctic Net project scientists used their sonar in the Beaufort Sea that lies close to Alaska. To their surprise, the equipment they used spotted huge circular objects between 820 and 2460 feet below the water surface. According to the sound wave changes, there were big volumes of gas somewhere on the seafloor, and that could be nothing else but volcanic activity. This turned out to be true, researchers came across mud volcanoes. Mud volcanoes are quite different from the ones everybody knows about. They form around vents in the Earth's surface, which release gas. Maybe they should call them Pumbaa volcanoes, after the character in The Lion King who also knows a thing or two about gas. Anyway, mud erupts from the seafloor, and the cone-shaped mound appears around the vent. In terms of temperature, Mud volcanoes are much cooler than the usual ones. 
In 2013, a multinational group of scientists decided to research the mud volcanoes in the Beaufort Sea using the Canadian icebreaker CCGS Sir Wilfrid Lawyer. This was the first expedition of the kind that took place in the Arctic Ocean. The research was risky. It was October, and there was a chance that the ice would become too thick and trap them in the middle of nowhere with no possibility to escape. However, this didn't stop the scientists, and soon the first results were ready. The mud volcanoes turned out to be real giants, 650 to 1200 yards across and as high as 100 feet. These monstrous formations often erupted, letting out gas <laughs> and mud into the water. These frequent eruptions increased the temperature of the sea, and water around the tops of the volcanoes can warm up to 48 degrees Fahrenheit. That's why the slopes and the tops of the mud volcanoes are covered with colonies of tube worms. When the cameras of the researchers spotted these creatures, people used small mechanical arms attached to these cameras to capture some of the worms. The length of the worms living in the Beaufort Sea is only 3 inches. However, their distant relatives, tube-dwelling annelid worms, whose habitat lies near hydrothermic vents deep under the water surface, can reach 6.5 feet. What is more, they grow slowly, and it may take them from 170 to 250 years to reach such length. Tube worms are exceptionally long-lived. But what is there to do with so much time? The Beaufort sea worms spend their life in the complete darkness, with one of their ends experiencing the heat from the fluid spewed up by the mud volcano, and the other floating in the near-freezing temperatures. Yeah, it sounds like fun. Not only that, these creatures have no stomach, anus, or eyes. Their food is gases released by the volcano. Scientists aren't completely sure yet how these worms manage to function, but they suppose that the creatures may farm the bacteria in their guts and later feed on them. However, both these worms and the mud volcanoes in the Beaufort Sea remain kind of a mystery for scientists. The biggest problem is to find an explanation why the volcanoes are so active. Shifting tectonic plates and earthquakes are the reasons for the eruptions of volcanoes, but the Arctic is mostly devoid of these phenomena. There might be numerous connected chambers beneath the volcanoes that can reach 3,280 feet beneath the seafloor. They may be feeding the mud volcanoes with methane and mud. But at the moment, these are just speculations and scientists have more urgent issues to worry about. Issues such as the Yellowstone Supervolcano. It's situated in Yellowstone National Park in Wyoming in the USA. The formation got its name due to its power to produce unbelievably violent eruptions. The crater of this volcano is 34 by 45 miles in size. The Niagara Falls would need a couple of centuries to fill its shallow chamber in, and thousands of years if we speak about its deeper reservoir. And the destructive force of the volcano is so huge that, according to scientists' calculation, 90,000 people would die instantly as soon as the volcano erupted. The results of such an eruption would become disastrous for the USA, causing nothing less than a nuclear winter. To say nothing of the grave impact on the national park attendance numbers. Yellowstone supervolcano erupted 2.1 million years ago, 3.1 million years ago, and 640,000 years ago, every time with dramatic consequences. If we follow the logic of these eruptions, then we have nothing to worry about for the next mm, 20,000 years. But scientists' forecasts are pretty disturbing. The volcano refuses to follow its own pattern and displays the signs of increasing activity. If Yellowstone volcano were to erupt, this would cause a significant drop in temperatures in the USA due to the gas haze over a huge area. As a result, lots of crops would die, leading to food shortages. Three feet of ash would cover towns and cities located even as far as 300 miles away from the volcano. Air traffic would be cut, leading to noticeable problems with communication. The worst would be ash floating in the air. As soon as a person breathes this ash in, this substance lacerates the lungs and forms glassy cement. Also, ash is six times denser than water, meaning that a lot of buildings would collapse under its weight. What's more, <laughs> there's more. Ash would break down roads and clog water systems, 
contaminate water supplies, making millions of homes uninhabitable. People would be in deadly danger even if they were a few hundred miles away. Scientists have many equipment set all over the national park, and they assure people that were the volcano to erupt, they would be able to predict this weeks in advance and evacuate those in immediate danger. But there are too many disaster movies to believe that, aren't there? So the solution is, we'll all move to Canada. <laughs> so what do you think about the danger volcanoes present? Do you take it seriously? Tell us in the comments below. Share this video with your friends and volcano fans, and remember to press the like button. Hey, subscribe to our channel if you don't want to miss our newest videos that appear on the bright side every day.